Pope of Minority Religion Urges Secularism. Wasting no time in making his and his church's voice heard, the new pope of the Egyptian Christian minority religion known as the Copts, Tawadros II, held a press interview in a monastery for the day following his ordination. The Coptic pontiff urged Christians and minority Muslims to stand their ground as the nation's new constitution is drafted and not to allow the majority Islamists to impose their religion into the legal process. The beauty of Egyptian society is the presence of Muslims beside Christians. Diversity is strong and beautiful, said the new pope. Continuing, he added, If a good constitution is presented, in which every person finds himself represented, there is no doubt Egypt will develop. But if the constitution addresses one part of the community and ignores another, it will take society backwards. Yet the pope also insists that he will not suggest that his followers take to the streets should the Islamists prevail, insisting that the church does not play any political role at all. If religion and politics meet, they ruin each other. He did, however, leave the door open to other forms of protest. Embarrassed, China attempts to halt Tibetan self-immolation by use of force. China has tried almost everything to stop Tibetans from setting themselves on fire in protest. They've tried propaganda, persuasion, and even money, all without success. In just one week last month, seven Tibetans set themselves ablaze in protest of China's expulsion of the Dalai Lama. In advance of the Communist Party Congress, the Chinese will use police forces armed with riot gear, fire extinguishers, and checkpoints to quell any protest activity. Even the mere spreading of news concerning immolations can now end in arrest. Wanting to demonstrate the stability of its rule in this region, authorities have enveloped many streets in the region with police forces trained specifically to stop protesters. Notices have been placed around common immolation sites, offering $8,000 for information on the scheming, planning, and instigation of such acts. Columbia University scholar Robbie Barnett notes that in some areas, Chinese authorities have offered money to the families of the dead if they will claim the immolation was a suicide and not done in political protest. Further efforts to instill Chinese values in Tibetan society include patriotic education in schools and monasteries forcing residents to study communist theory. All such actions have been met with resistance from the Tibetans, who continue to resent Chinese rule. Not willing to back down an inch, the Chinese also accused the Dalai Lama himself of plotting Tibetan immolations from his exiled location. The immolations have continued to increase, with six more Tibetans setting themselves on fire just as the Communist Party Congress opened in Beijing this past Friday. Nikula Baseli Nikula goes to jail. Ever heard of Nikuli Baseli Nikula? He is better known as Mark Baseli Yusuf, the man responsible for the Innocence of Muslims movie. Yusuf had just been found guilty of violating parole and sentenced to one year in prison. He had pleaded guilty to four different charges, all involving his use of his two names. Nikula Yusuf had also used the alias Sam Basile to pr produce his movie. Robert Dugdale, the prosecuting attorney, said that the cast was misled into believing that they were making a sword and sandal epic about a murderous tribal leader named George. Once they were done filming, their voices were crudely dubbed over, and George became Prophet Muhammad. Four probation violation charges were dropped as part of a deal with the accused. They were all linked to the making of the movie. Judge Christina Snyder refused to allow home confinement instead of prison, saying that Nikula had, quote, struck a deal far more favorable than he might have otherwise suffered. Oh.